Hey there, welcome. Thank you for joining today. My name is Krista Lugo with Asset Banda, and I'm super excited to bring our new reservation feature to you and introduce you to that and hopefully uh, expose you to some new upcoming cool stuff you're going to get to, to use in the Asset Panda account. So um, before I dive too far in, I do want to address a few things that you're seeing on your control panel here. Uh, one of those is the Q&A box, and that's going to be super important for today's session. There's a live live Q&A session afterward, and I highly encourage you to ask any questions that you have. Um, we're definitely ready to answer those and get your feedback and just talk with you about the feature. So again, you can ask questions throughout the entire webinar. You don't have to wait until the end. Um, we'll be collecting those and answering those uh, to the best of our ability as we go along and afterwards. So please feel free to, um, to utilize that. The other, uh, the other um, panel there is a survey. Obviously, we always want to get as much feedback from you as we can, and we love hearing from you and appreciate any insights that you have and are willing to, to share with us. Uh, there's also a resources tab there, too. The Bamboo Crew is our Facebook page, and it's exclusive to Asset Panda clients. It's a great, great space and a great place to go and collaborate with other users and get insights there as well as talk to the Asset Panda team. So. Uh, the, the last thing that I'll call out on your control panel here is the media player. Make sure you've got that cranked. Um, the majority of this presentation is definitely video. So ensure that you can hear me and walk through, and I'm ready to dive in and get started with you. So one of the first things that we'll go over, um, and the, the like I said, the key takeaways for the day here are learning how to use the new reservation feature. Uh, we'll walk through a bunch of different scenarios and make sure that you're comfortable with it or at least strive to do so. Um, we'll learn some best practices as well. And of course, ask tons of questions and get some answers there. So let's hop into our agenda. I kind of mentioned some of this already, but what we want to do is make sure that you understand the solution, the benefit that it brings you obviously, and how to use it. Uh, we'll discuss those usage tips and tricks here, make it mo most efficient for you, and then dive into the Q&A. Awesome. I am ready to dive in and get started. And yeah, let's go ahead and do it. All right, so let's talk reservations and how to best use this new feature. Uh, I am in my Asset Panda test account here. And if I navigate to my assets group, have configured uh, reservations for assets. And in this instance, we are reserving assets to a person. So if you needed a piece of equipment, um, uh, be it a computer, an iPad, a vehicle, a piece of heavy equipment, whatever the case may be, uh, so long as your company has this configured in a way that allows you to reserve those items, you know, some might be items that can be reserved, others might not be able to be reserved. So it all depends on the settings, but in any case, we're gonna walk through the workflow here. So if I needed to reserve a particular piece of equipment, there are a few things that I can look at to see if it's currently reserved. The easiest way to see this and to search for something that you need is to go to the calendar. So we'll navigate there now. And on my calendar, I'm going to default to the Gantt view. So essentially, what's going to happen here is you've got your calendar view set up. You will need to configure your calendar views. To do that, you would just add a group view. Now, again, by default, since you have reservations turned on for your account, you're going to already see one view at least, right, for the group that reservations is configured on. So. Um, my account has reservations configured on assets. Those are the things that I can actually reserve and check out. Um, and so by default, I have an assets view here. To create a new view, just simply click on the plus button and you can add a view for any one of your groups, right? Or you can add a filtered view. So for example, I want to see maybe only separate certain types of items uh, in a sub view. Let's say I go there often. I always want to look at trucks or I always want to look at laptops, for example. Um, that would be something where you could create a quick view to, to just have that uh, 
have that ease of use there. So if I hit the plus button and added a filtered view here, I could call this one um, ATVs, right? I would choose my group. ATVs are assets. They fall under my assets group. And then I'm just going to simply add a quick filter. <clears throat> Say, the, I want to see everything where the asset type is like. Um, okay, so I chose a bad example here. I don't have a category called ATVs. Let's call it heavy equipment. And we'll create that. Okay, if I wanted to see only those items, I can highlight that. And then if I had anything in that category, it would show up here on my listing screen. So I know I have something in laptops. Let's use that one. So here's a laptop I have in the system here, right? Um, <clears throat> and so essentially what you can do is to say, show me all of my assets. And if I have my dates configured properly in my view, right now if you click on the edit button here, you'll see that the only dates that I want to see in my view are under actions. And that is my reservations. I want to see the reservations on the calendar so I know when something's already reserved. And I also want to see the checkout. So <clears throat> subsequent to reserving something, for example, I reserve something for Monday through Friday. When Monday rolls around, I need to actually go and fulfill my reservation, whether that's picking it up, whether it's shipping the equipment somewhere. There's always a next step, right? And in this example, I, my next step is to check it out, right? I'm going to go pick it up. I'm going to scan the barcode, check out the item, et cetera. Um, okay, so in this case, <clears throat> uh, I'm only showing those two dates because what I'm searching for is availability. I want to see everything that's available to me. Wonderful. Okay, so here's a list of all of my assets. And on the Gantt view, I can break this down to weeks um, all the way down to hours um, or zoom out all the way out to overarching months, right? I like looking at the week view here. Great, so there are two different ways to reserve equipment. The first one is you're looking and you see blank space, which means these items are available to us, right? <clears throat> so the first thing I would do is, you know, poke around at this, um, make sure that the display field in your account is something that's relative to you. So um, it might not, the asset ID, which is my display field, might not tell you much, right? unless you know that you're looking at and you've filtered your list, either you're looking at a quick view or you can filter down your list to search from here. So if I'm looking at, these are all of my assets, I can simply just hit the filter icon here and sort and filter down my data accordingly. So if I said, show me only items that are um, in the location of um, Fort Worth and apply that, then I would see only those items, right? So. Uh, essentially, you can filter this list down to, to find only what you're looking for from a reservation perspective. This little icon here, the slider icon, allows you to group the data by multitude of different options. Um, in this case, we can say, show me everything by asset type. And it'll just kind of roll those things up. So this is handy when you need to reserve multiple types of items um, at one time. So let's use this as an example. So I know I need something for Tuesday the 23rd through the 26th. I can do one of two things. I can look through here, see everything that's available to me, uh, and you know, obviously with what I need, and I will click and drag on the calendar the, um, the date range that I need, right? And then I'm going to just simply select who it's reserved for. In this case, it's me, right? I'm going to continue, and now I can select this item, I can select this item, and maybe this item. So I needed one of each of these types of things, right? This up here where you see that it piling up at the top, that is essentially just a snapshot of what I'm reserving right now, right? Um, and of course this ticker continues to go up as I add or remove things, right? So if I remove it, it goes down to two. Okay, so I can now just click on reserve. These are the items I've confirmed that these are the ones that I want. I click on reserve and maybe the system asks me for a little bit of information. This again is dependent upon um, your particular configuration, the way that your company has this feature set up for you. It may or may not ask you for anything here. And that's it. 
it's just going to give me a summary here. I can change my um, my dates too. I can go ahead and edit this at this point, put it into any additional comments, and then set the notification that I want. So let's say I want a notification one day before. I would just simply go in and change that value here. And I will confirm it. It's going to confirm my reservation. See how these are still transparent though? Um, they're... That just means they're upcoming. They haven't been fulfilled yet, right? So now, let's say you're ready to come pick up these items, right? You're, you're going in and you're actually um, retrieving the assets that you needed. There's two ways you can see the, um, the reservations at this point. The Gantt view is a great way to do it, or any calendar view, rather. So if I went to the month, I should be able to see it on the month view as well. So here's that one that we just made right? And then the week view, if I actually scrolled to that week, I should see my reservation here. Perfect. So also you have this reservation sort of control panel here to see everything that's upcoming, right? And if I click on this, then I see the details about it. And I know that status is still upcoming, meaning I haven't gone and picked it up yet. It's not the 23rd, right? Ongoing means these are the current reservations that are actively underway. So uh, again, I've reserved something for Monday through Friday, Monday rolls around, someone comes in, you know, they pick up their item, and the reservation is kind of in an active status, right? Previous just means these are past reservations. Awesome. So upcoming, let's look at this. So now, when it comes time, I can go and just simply click on check this out, right? I'm going to go ahead and fulfill my reservation. If your company has a hold time set up, essentially what that means is, Again, let's say Monday through Friday rolls around and you don't come on Monday um, to pick it up. What happens to your reservation? Does it get abandoned and does it go back to available, right, for someone else to use that piece of equipment? Or are we simply allowing for additional time for you to come in and fulfill that? So um, some, you can, some clients, I'm sure, will have it go from, you know, one day all the way down to just two hours, right? So it's dependent upon the way that your company has this, con this feature configured. Um, but it will, um, if, if you don't come and actually do this next step, whatever that next step is, right, within the reservation hold time, the reservation would be considered upcoming abandoned, meaning that's where it stopped in the process and it would be thrown into this previous bucket and the item would be back to available for the next person to, to reserve, right? So a Monday rolls around, I come in and I just hit check out here. I can also do that on the Gantt view as well. I can simply click on this and it will give me the option to go ahead and check it out. I can also come in and edit my reservation and or cancel it as well. When you edit it, it gives you the option to change your dates or the, uh, the items that, you've, that you're reserving, right? So you can, you can go and play with this, search, you know, filter down your results and choose different items. This is important when you might get a notification that says, hey, your reservation is at risk. So let's say uh, John reserves it for Monday through Friday, but Sally has it the week before right? And since Sally's had it, the item has been damaged. So the status has been updated to out for repair or damage reported, and you can't actually physically take this item, right? If you receive that notification, my reservation is at risk. Uh, essentially, you would want to come in here and edit your reservation and say, okay, I probably need to find a different a different device that I need or tool or vehicle, whatever the case may be, right, to swap those out. So you would be able to come in and search for availability here just through that edit screen. And again, you can simply just cancel the reservation as well. So I can come in, hit check out here, or I can check out from the reservation sort of I call it the control panel. <laughs> so you can you can do either way, um, either one of those. So if I go ahead and hit check out here, it's going to ask me for a little bit more information, confirming that I am me, obviously. So we don't want to uh, release this to, to the person who it's not reserved for, right? And then I simply just apply that. And all of the items that are in that reservation have now been fulfilled. Great. So if we go back to our reservation panel here, Remember, we had it in upcoming. It's no longer there. If we go to ongoing, we'll see that this reservation is underway. And simply when I'm finished, 
able to simply click on check in for reservations. Same way you did the checkout, you're just bringing it back. Maybe the system's going to ask you for the condition of the item. And you're good to go. You'll see that you'll see it marked here as previous now uh, and that the uh, the item was reserved, picked up, fulfilled, and returned. Awesome. All right, let's take a look at a different way, another way to perform a reservation here in the system. So uh, again, I'm back in my calendar. I can look for availability here in the Gantt view relatively easily. Um, I can also navigate to month, even though I don't see availability because I don't see an asset list here. I can still just click on this reserve button. So I can do that from week, month, or Gantt. I like the Gantt view. I like to be able to see all of the assets listed here and, and kind of filter those down and search for what I'm looking for. But in any case, without performing the reservation in the UI like we did last time on the actual calendar, you can simply click on reserve. Choose your start date and your end date for your reservation. Choose the person who it's reserved for in this case. So again, sometimes it might be, uh, depending on your use case, it might be reserving to a job site, it might be reserving uh, a room, for example, for an event, etc. So in this case, we've got a list of all of our items here, similar to what we saw here on the listing screen of your Gantt, uh, just formatted a bit differently. So again, I can filter down my, my view here. If you notice anything grayed out, it means that that item is already reserved for the same time frame. It's not going to allow you to overlap reservations or checkouts for that matter. So even if something's, um, you know, been checked out and fulfilled, um, if it overlaps the time frame that you've selected, it won't allow you to reserve that so that there's no, there's no overlap. So let's say I've filtered my list down and I found everything that I'm looking for and I know I want this item specifically. And then I simply click on next. Again, these are those additional fields. Some of these, obviously, for this testing purpose, um, might not be relevant. And it takes us to that summary page again. Pretty standard and easy. You can add multiple notifications. I don't think I showed you that here a, a moment ago. Um, never thir 30 hours. <laughs> but you can say one hour, 30 minutes, and, and um, modify when you get notified about your reservation and then simply click on com uh, confirm and it will confirm that and block it out here on the calendar as well. Again, reservations panel is a great place to come in and just kind of manage your reservations here. Another quick thing I wanted to show you is in the reporting section. So the reservations are reportable. They, the, uh, the report will, will reside in the action report section. So I have this test one that I've gone in and made <clears throat> called reservations made last week. If we edit that, we can take a look at the parameters. So I've named it. I'm obviously reporting on my assets group because that's where my reservation uh, action sits. I've selected that action um, called system reservation action, right? If I wanted to, uh, uh, to report on something else, I would change that. Um, but then the reservation type is something that's a little new to the system from a reporting perspective uh, for this particular feature. And I can report on reservations created, requested or canceled. And then of course I just put in a filter here for to look for only the reservations made uh, within from today minus seven days to show me the last seven days. You could certainly just put in two specific values here or you could say show me all the reservations made uh, before January 1st or after you know uh, February 28th for example. And then of course, you're just going to pull your fields over on the right hand side, the fields of information you'd like to see on your report and simply save and close that. And then of course, to generate that, you would just click on the name of the report and it would, it would start generating your report and deliver that to you. Awesome. One last thing I want to show you today, and that is on the asset record itself. If one of these items uh, does have a reservation applied to it or has in the past, now you'll see, in addition to the action history, audits, changes, things that we're used to seeing in Asset Panda, you'll also have this reservations tab here to see 
previously made reservations on this asset. And of course, the, the status or state, right? This looks like I reserved this item and I, uh, I fulfilled my reservation and I've returned it since then, right? This one got rejected. So you can see all of that history um, here in the reservations view. Fantastic. I hope this was helpful. Again, remember to navigate to the calendar. It's going to be the most efficient and easy way to use the new reservation functionality. And be sure to set up those calendar views here. Those are at the user level. Um, so if you need additional assistance with this part, there's additional documentation in the knowledge base and the Asset Panda knowledge base, as well as a previous webinar that went over specifically just the calendar updates and creating those views. Awesome. Okay, I think let's uh, we're ready to just turn this over for live Q&A at this point. So thanks so much for jumping in and joining. I hope you'll stay for the live Q&A. If you don't, please check out the, um, the Asset Panda community portal by going to the support portal in your Asset Panda account. And if you have any questions or you need help, let's uh, definitely get you over to support at assetpanda.com. But I'm going to go ahead and roll over to the Q&A. Please stick around for that if you can. I hope it's going to be super helpful to you. So thanks, everybody, again, and I'll talk to you here. All right. <clears throat> hey there, everyone. So I hope you, um, I know that's a lot to cover. Um, it's a pretty big feature um, in, in that short period of time, but I hope it gave you uh, a general sense of what it is that we're looking to do here um, with, uh, with the reservation feature. So let's go ahead and dive in and start looking at a few questions um, and getting some answers. I'm, I'm going to try to get to all of these um, uh, today during the Q&A session. If I do miss any, I promise you that you're going to be taking these internalizing them and making sure that the feedback is getting back to the appropriate folks. And we'll also make sure that, that you get the answer to your questions. So first one, let's just dive in. Um, can you reserve an asset from the asset list view instead of the calendar view? So um, you picked up on something <laughs> as we were walking through that. There is a button on the listing screen, and there is also a button on the asset record detail screen, right? If I were to open a record, and you can see that. Um, however, as of now, you can do it. Um, the one thing I don't, uh, I think that, that we are working on and enhancing the experience on those two options is if I were to go to my listing screen and select five items and then click reserve, the system's not holding on to that. Bear with us. This is a new feature. Right? We're going to continue to enhance it. Um, so. I think that for me, it seems maybe a little inefficient that I would have to go and search for those five items again in that reservation pop-up screen. Um, so the answer to your question is absolutely yes, you could. Um, I don't think that it's the most efficient way to go about it as of yet until they release some additional enhancements to, to just that particular screen on the listing or the records details page. But great question. All right, next one. Will this work with the normal checkout check-in process? We use Barcode Scanner to check out and check in items. So can we use both? For example, check out using the reservation system and then scan items back in on return. Okay, so another, another good question. So um, we, we went through some configuration um, webinars as well, um, and, and some of that stuff is posted on the knowledge base for you too. So the existing checkout function won't, un unless your existing checkout action is what we call date-driven, right, meaning that it is looking at dates um, for things like reservations and other actions, it is not going to talk to your reservation system. So the reservation module is date-driven, meaning it has a it's a hard-coded start date and end date, and it knows that this item is being reserved for a certain person, place, or thing, right? The subsequent next step action, for example, your checkout action, has to be connected to that reservation in order to know that it's been fulfilled. So if you have a current checkout and it's just a standard action, which the majority of them are, 
it's going to be something that you would want to phase out and create a new checkout action. Um, now, you won't, you won't lose any historical data. Nothing about your existing data is going to change. It's simply about making that, that older checkout action inactive and, um, and basically creating a new one to start picking up on that workflow in a, in a new way that's talking to your reservation. So you can absolutely um, still scan the barcode of the asset and perform a, a, a checkout. It'll just be the, the new checkout that is um, connected to your reservation. Great question. If I didn't answer that, that's, that's a, a, a lot. That's a pretty meaty question. <laughs> so if you, um, if you need some additional information, too, and I didn't kind of didn't, didn't hit the target there for you, um, let's put that one into the support channel, too, and we'll make sure to expand on it for sure. There's a lot to do uh, with the, the way that your reservations module is configured um, that answers a lot of that, that question, too. So thanks for asking. Um, Next one, can we generate a report on all reservation types in one report or only one at a time? Yeah, so as of right now, um, it looks like it's just gonna be one reservation type at a time, so show me everything that's created between this time and this time, or everything that was fulfilled or um, approved, for example, um, or canceled, uh, but that's definitely a great, a great feature idea, I'm sure. I'm hoping that it's something that we've already been considering too, um, just to give a more holistic view of uh, all of the reservations and the, like the full life cycle of those. So stay tuned for that, and I'm, I'm going to take that one and toss it over to our product team and ask them a few questions about it myself. So thanks for sharing. Okay, do we have to configure this new reservation action, or will it update automatically and allow us to use it? Okay, so uh, in the configuration of the reservation section, and um, if you are a system administrator and missed this morning's webinar, this morning we had a webinar for um, kind of the more technical side of this um, on the flip side and, and actually the configuration tool of it. If you missed that, it is going to be published on the knowledge base probably within the next few hours. We were striving to get those up there by the end of the day after we finished our full webinar sessions today. So please, please be on the lookout for that one. You're going to get a lot of information out of that, too. Um, but yes, once we toggle on reservations in the configuration tool, and you actually turn that functionality on, which will be broadly available to everyone as of tomorrow morning, um, essentially the system creates, it auto-creates the reservation action. And it, it basically hard codes it into your configuration that says, Okay, great. We're going to capture a start date and end date. And you need to tell me, me being the system, right? <laughs> you need to tell the system what the reserved for field is, meaning is it, the, is it an employee? Is it a user, a system user? Is it a job site, an event, um, right, and so forth? So the only thing that you're giving the reservation feature is what is this reserved for? Now, as you know, Asset Panda is highly configurable, right? So if you have, you know, how you can go in and, and create your own actions right now and configure those with additional information. So I could put in a field called um, what color is this item or, you know, anything obscure. Um, I could ask for the project manager of the job site it's going to. I could ask for uh, the condition of the asset and so forth. So you can add many fields as you want to a normal action, right? In the reservation configuration screen, even though it's, it's automatically creating the action for you, you still have the ability to add additional fields um, to capture additional data points at that point, too. But to answer your question, long story long, sorry about that, um, you, it, the system is automatically going to create that reservation action for you in the background. And it will be readily available for use pending user permissions, right? So if if I turn it on, uh, but I only give access to a handful of people to actually see it and perform it, then obviously that's, those are going to be the people who would actually get, get access to it. Okay. Um, let's see. Does each individual user have to go in and set up their own calendar views with the filters um, of the different assets, or we can set up master calendar view? 
of our assets and kids. That's the same for all of our teams. Another great question, and um, this is something we actually received a lot of feedback on. Um, currently, the calendar views are specific to the user um, and, and system administrators um, aren't setting them up at the company level. It's definitely been some pretty significant feedback. Um, and I would love to put your name on that list <laughs> if you're okay with that. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and make sure that um, that feedback is getting back to you, um, back to our product team. And um, it's definitely been one of the things that have been, has been the most uh, requested as a result of the new UI and the new calendar feature. Um, also, for those of you who are hanging out um, today and during this, there's going to be a few more enhancements coming tomorrow morning with, in addition to releasing reservations, right? So in addition to the reservation functionality, we're also going to be putting out some enhancements to the asset listing screen, an updated filter uh, there as well, and some wrap, te wrap text options on that listing screen where uh, in the new UI when we first released it, it had some of that truncated text there. We're, we're opening up some different options there too. Um, as well as some performance enhancements to the listing screen. So be on the lookout for those. Um, and if you have any feedback about that, we'd love to hear it. And we want to we wanna make sure that we're getting that back to the proper channels and funnels. Awesome. One person asked, when is this going to be available? So um, I don't know that I made that very clear during the presentation, but it is going to be released overnight tonight and should be available to the, the general audience as of tomorrow. Awesome. So I think that covers the majority of the questions that I've gotten in here. They're all kind of related, um, which is nice. Um, we went over reports and user permissions. Yeah. So if there's anything else that comes to mind, anything at all, um, as you're as you're pondering this and thinking about it, or maybe you're playing around with it tomorrow, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to us, support at assetpanda.com. Um, and obviously look for updated information and, and these, this webinar as well as the, uh, the one that came earlier this morning, both of those to be posted to the knowledge base with some additional information and documentation around the new feature. So if there's anything at all that you need, any feedback that you want to give, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're happy to hear it. And um, obviously you're the most valuable part of Asset Panda and, and you're the reason why we do this. So. If you can give us that feedback, that's awesome. So have a wonderful afternoon. Thanks for your time and joining me today. And I look forward to doing another webinar soon. And I hope that you all join in. All right. Thank you.